shine through me and be so in me that every soul I come in contact with may feel thy presence in my soul. Let them look up and see no longer me, but only Jesus. Stay with me, and then I shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others. Amen and amen. Good morning again, and thank you so much for being a part of the Daily Download. I'm your host, Dr. Devara Pulley. If this is your first time watching the Daily Download, like, follow, and share the Dr. Devara Pulley page so that you can get notifications of when we're on Facebook Live. If you're one of our regular Kingdom citizens, students of truth, you know what time it is. It's time to press that share button, invite a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a co-worker, a classmate, a church member, and let them know that you're looking at the Daily Download live with Dr. Dorara Pulley and invite them to watch it live with you. How about you start a watch party? Let's get some electronic popcorn and have a good time. Well, as you can see, I am in the city of Baltimore. Uh, my son celebrated his 21st birthday yesterday and we're here celebrating with him. I can't believe it. my baby is 21 years old. I'm telling you, I'm getting better. I'm not getting old. I'm getting better. So I'm excited. Uh, still in the city of Baltimore, uh, the place of my birth. I thought I would wear a St. Francis Academy uh, t-shirt today. Uh, that was a school where I served for over 20 years, yes, um, in education. And so I'm glad to be in the city of Baltimore. Just feeling a little nostalgic this morning. Uh, and so today we're on day number, we're on day number 10. Yes, we're looking at day number 10. Um, and our subject for today is this tools for you. Can I say it again? This, not this buds for you. This tool is for you. Uh, let's look at page in our book. Let's look at page number, uh, page number nine in your book. If you're following along your book, page number nine. Page number nine lists all the spiritual tools in the toolbox. And I'm telling you that every one of these tools is for you. So let me just go over them real quickly. Reading and study, reading, studying, and researching the scriptures, uh, which it represents the Allen Keys. Just affirm that tool is for me. Yes. The second tool is quoting the scriptures, denials, and affirmations, the hammer. Come on, affirm. That tool is for me. All right. The third one, which is the one we're focusing on this week, Thanksgiving praise and worship as represented by the putty knife. Affirm with me. That tool is for me. And the fourth one that we're studying this week um, is fasting, the needle nose pliers, as well as forgiving. We'll get into labor, which is the uh, vice grip pliers. Just affirm that tool is for me. All right. The next one is stillness and movement, which is the wrench. Come on, affirm with me. That tool is for me. Uh, the sixth one, silence and sound, is represented by the handsaw. Affirm with me. That tool is for me. Uh, seven is giving stewardship of your time, talents, and treasures, represented by the screwdriver. Come on, affirm with me. That tool is for me. The eighth one is fellowship with the saints and positive people, the ratchet. Uh, affirm with me, that tool is for me. The next one is visioning and visualization. Uh, the utility knife and the razor blades. Affirm with me, that tool is for me. The next one is meditation, mindfulness, and breathing as represented by the level. Affirm with me, that tool is for me. All right, the 11th one is writing and journaling, represented by the pencil. Come on, affirm with me, that tool is for me. And the 12th one, witnessing and sharing your testimony with others, as represented by the measuring tape. Affirm with me, that tool is for me. So i just like to start right out front and let go of this erroneous idea, this limiting belief, this faulty perception that some of the tools are for you and some of the tools are not for you. All the tools are for you. You need every one of those 12 tools. That's why we put them in the book and that's why we're studying two a week because every one of these tools you need for the development of your soul, for the development of your uh, wholeness manifested in your health and manifested in your wealth and manifested in your relationship, you need every one of these tools. And when a person is building a house, there's not one of these tools that they don't use. You need every one of these tools 
in your life. And so the goal for you uh, through this Lenten season is for you to know what they are, to be able to use them, and to be able to master them where you're able to teach somebody else the tools. That's right, I said it. To learn, to know what the tool is, to know how to use the tool, and to master the tool. That you get so good with the tool that you're able to teach somebody else, mentor somebody else, um, coach somebody else with the tools. All right. So in our text today, which is found in Luke chapter, um, not Luke, Matthew chapter 17, verses 14 through 21, uh, there was a man who was called a lunatic. Um, I really believe he was having seizures. Um, he would cut himself. He would throw himself in the water. He would throw himself in the fire. He lived in the tombs. He would make all kind of, in the tombs, he would make all kind of na uh, noises and all kinds of sounds. And, um, and and he was in isolation and his family, they couldn't deal with him. They didn't know what else to do with him. Uh, so they brought him to Jesus' disciples and they asked them, because they thought it was a demon, they said, cast this demon out of our son uh, because we can't do anything with him and we're afraid that he's going to kill us all. And the disciples, they tried to cast the demon out. They tried to get rid of the negative influence um, and they were unsuccessful. And so... Uh, they brought the, the child, the boy, to Jesus. And Jesus was successful in causing the young man to experience healing, wholeness, and health. And so, therefore, um, they see Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus handled him. said, we brought him to your disciples, and they weren't able to help us. And let me tell you something. There's a place that you can get in consciousness where whatever people need, either you're able to provide it or you're able to direct them to someone who can provide it. Come on firm, I am a resource center. Come on affirm again, I am a resource. God is the source, but I am a resource center, which means that I have whatever it takes inside of me to be able to help the person or be able to direct the person to someone who can help them or direct the person to the presence of God that is in them that is their help. Amen. All right. And so uh, Jesus said, bring him to me. And Jesus was able to successfully um, help the young man. The Bible says he was seated and he was clothed and he was in his right mind. He used to say that in testimony service. I thank and give God praise that I am clothed and in my right mind. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts if you've ever been to testimony service. <laughs> and they said, uh, I, uh, I'm clothed and in my right mind. It comes from this story of the, of the young man. And so the disciples, they were the ones who were intimately following Jesus. They were his disciplined followers. And they asked Jesus, why couldn't we cast him out? Why? You've been teaching us. You've been training us. We've been following you. We've given up everything to follow you. Why were we not able to help this young man, to help this family? And Jesus said that this kind only happens through fasting and prayer. That's why right, I said it. Jesus said it in Matthew 17, 21. This kind only comes forth through fasting and prayer. And so this week, the tool, one of the tools that we're studying is the needle nose pliers. And I don't have my toolbox with me because I'm um, in, in Baltimore, but it's the needle nose pliers. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. If you've ever seen the needle nose pliers, they deal a lot with wiring. All right. And so the fasting is like the needle nose pliers. And Jesus said that prayer and fasting, you need to do them both. And we're understanding that prayer is uh, fasting is a form of prayer because prayer is your two way communication between you and God. It is where God talks to you and you talk to God. And let me tell you, there's something about fasting that causes me to be able to hear God in a clear way that I'm not always able to hear uh, just in my everyday experience. But when I make a change in my digestion, when I make a change in the food that I am consuming, it makes a change in my life. Any change that you make in your life, it changes every aspect of your life because you're a whole system within yourself. And when you change one aspect of the system, you change the entire system. And so, um, and so what Jesus was saying is that fasting is a vital part of your spiritual toolbox. It's a part of the development of your conscience. But people don't desire to fast. People say fasting is not for me. 
But I'm telling you, this tool is for you. Every tool in the toolbox is for you, and especially the tool of fasting, because we're using this over the next 40 days. All right? And so I, I you got a prayer um, and fasting commitment form, a fasting commitment form to say what you were going to fast from or to. You got your accountability partner that's going to hold you accountable. And you also said what it is that you desire to manifest as a result at the end of this fast. How many completed that? Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give, you got your partner. You clearly define what it is that you're fasting from. And you are clear about what it is that you desire to manifest by the end of this consecration. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. This is the needle nose pliers. This is one of your tools uh, for the development of your soul. Come on, give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. If you're all into the fast, if you have everything set up, what you're fasting from, what you desire to manifest, and you got your accountability partner with you, your person who is working with you in consciousness. All right? I was talking to some more people yesterday, and they were saying, well, where's the chart that tells us what to do? I said, the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to do. God made your body and knows all about it, and if you, this is calling you to be still, and listen, you can do intermittent fasting, where you can fast for X number of hours a day, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours a day. You can do where you fast from certain things, maybe it's sweets, maybe it's sugar, maybe it's coffee. Uh, you can do uh, a combination of absolute fast. Any type of combination that spirit desires you to do, uh, you need to do it because this tool is for you. The needle nose pliers, which is represented by fasting, is for you. For you, I've been on all kind of fast: three days and three nights, seven days, seven nights, five days, five nights. The Daniel's fast. Um, I've been through all intermittent fasting. I've been through all different types of fast. And let me tell you, it works because it is a tool. It helps when your body is clear and clean, your mind is clear and clean. And so maybe you've tried a lot of different things to deal with a whole lot of different situations. How about fasting? Try the needle nose pliers. Let's Let's talk about what fasting does. Let's talk about the results of it. All right. All right. So we're talking about fasting today um, and we're talking about the needle nose pliers. Um, and one of the things that those needle nose pliers does is it cuts. And when you are fasting, you are cutting something out of your life. All right. So what the needle nose pliers does is it cuts. It actually cuts the wires. What in your life needs to be cut out? What are the words that you've been speaking that needs to be cut out? What are the, uh, the actions that you've been doing that need to be cut out? The needle nose pliers of fasting will help you change what you say out of your mouth and help you change your action. Because when you change what you're eating, you're already changing action. And if you can change what you're eating, you can change any other action in your life. When you change the beverages that you are consuming, you're already changing an action. And so the same power that allows you to change what you're eating and what you're drinking allows you to change any Anything else in your life. So pulley point number one is that the needle nose pliers, and this tool is for you of fasting, it is used to cut, to cut things out of your life. Words that are not positive, negative, profanity, vulgarity, things that are limiting words, that it empowers you to be able to cut those things out of your life. Any behavior, any action that is not leading you to your path of wholeness, it empowers you to cut it out. All right. So pulley point number one, this tool is for you. Uh, the needle nose pliers is cut. What those wire, what that needle nose pliers is used for is for cutting. Pulley point number two. The needle nose pliers are also used for bending. Bending. Sometimes what you're experiencing in your life is that you're being stubborn. You're being bullheaded. You're being hard-headed. You are not being flexible. And so what the needle nose pliers of fasting does is it helps you to bend, not break, but it helps you to bend, to be more flexible, to be open to other people's ideas and suggestions. You're not the only person that God is talking to. You're not the only person that God is flowing through. So the needle nose pliers of fasting helps you to be more flexible, help you to be more, to, to bend, to compromise. Yes, to give up something and to gain something. 
something, all right? And so where are you not being flexible in your life? Where are you not open and receptive to divine unlimited ideas? I was giving someone a suggestion yesterday from the Holy Spirit, and the first response is, no, I ain't doing that. Oh, no, mm -mm, I'm not doing that. You just don't know. No, I'm not doing And I looked at the resistance that they were going through. I looked at how resistant they were to just to say, well, you don't really know her. If you knew her, you would not be telling her. I said, let me tell you this. I've never met her in my whole entire life. But let me tell you, spirit knows that person. And spirit is telling me you need to take that person out to lunch. And eventually, you know, we're on a consecration. The person was able to be flexible and open enough to try it. To try a suggestion that's given for your soul. And let me tell you when you know it's God. When you don't desire to do it. When your will is saying no, when you're basing it on the past, you know that the Holy Spirit is helping you to be more flexible. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, help me to be more flexible. Affirm it again. Holy Spirit, help me to be more flexible. Let me tell you, fasting is going to help you be more flexible. Yes, the needle nose pliers of fasting is going to help you bend. Yes, and be more flexible. That's why people's knees hurt. The knees represent um, you being flexible. That uh, just like you bend your knee, it's a form of bending. It's a form of flexibility. People experience uh, pain um, in their in their joints. Those things that need to bend. And your body is just saying to you, you need to be more flexible and not just limber physically with stretches. And yes, you need to do that physical exercise of stretching. But in your mind, in your heart, your way is not the only way to do it. There are other people that have suggestions. Incorporate their suggestions so that you're not being so controlling. Let me tell you, the needle nose uh, tool of, of, uh, of fasting will help you be more flexible. Affirm with me, flag, fasting helps me be more flexible. Affirm it again. Fasting helps me be more flexible. If you're inflexible, then you need to do some fasting. The needle nose pliers of fasting will help you to be able to bend. All right? So pulley point number one, the needle nose pliers, it helps us to cut things out, cut out words and actions that are not leading us in the direction of our good. Pulley point number two, the needle nose pliers of fasting helps us to be more flexible. Pulley point number three, the needle nose pliers of fasting, it also strips those, you know, they strip the, the pliers, you, you, they take the wire and they strip it. Uh, that sometimes what needs to happen is that you need to be stripped. And you say strip naked? No, I'm talking about getting to the bottom of whatever it is. We need to strip down to what it really is going on with you. And sometimes it is through fasting that you get that clarity of what's really going on. Now, I know what's going on in, on the surface. But what's going on underneath? And when you strip all of that other stuff that's on the surface, you get to the bottom of what's really going on. What it is that you're really afraid of. What it is that you're really, that erroneous idea that you've been telling yourself for years. That covenant you made with yourself when you were a little boy, when you were a little girl. You, it strips you down to what the real issue is so that you can recover. It strips down to what the real seeming problem is. Because many times what you're fussing about is not the problem. It's not about the toothpaste. It's not about the toilet the paper rolled the wrong way. It's not about the seat being left up. Those little things that you are fussing about and you're irritated about, that's not what it is. And so what fasting does is help you strip to get down to what the real issue is. Um, um, I was working with someone and they said in the language, in their literature, it says the exact nature. What fasting does is helps you get to the exact nature of what's going on. Not all this fluff and all this foolishness. What is the exact nature of what is going on? And that's what fasting does. It helps you to get, it helps you to strip down all that foolishness and all that stuff that you think it is and get to the exact nature of what's going on. All right. So pulley point number one, the needle nose uh, pliers of fasting. It helps you cut out words and actions that are not helpful. Pulley point number two, the needle nose pliers of fasting. What it does, it causes you to be more flexible. Pulley point number three, the needle nose pliers of fasting helps you to strip the wire to get down to what's really going on. 
And yes, I got pulley point number four. I did that on Sunday. I was preaching. Oh, it was a long message. It was a good message, but it was a long message. Give me some thumbs up. Give me some high five if you saw Sunday's 1030 message. That was my top pick for Sunday. Sunday at 1030. If you were there, if you went back and saw the message, give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Give me some hearts. I have four points on Sunday because there are four aspects for the development of the soul. And so I got four points today. The fourth point of the needle nose pliers of fasting is that it helps you to rewire. Yes. Not only does it help you cut the wire, not only does it help you bend the wire, not only does fasting help you strip the wire, but fasting also helps you to rewire. And there's some things that need to be rewired in your life. There are ways of being that need to be rewired, which means a new way of being. There are ways of thinking where you've been thinking that old thought and you've been getting the same result. And those thoughts need to be rewired to think a new thought, to, to look at the, your, your way of seeing it, your way of thinking about it, what your way of being in the situation needs to be rewired. And it is about your consciousness. It's about the way that you're seeing it. It's the same situation, but rewire it and see it differently. The same situation, rewire it and think about it differently. The same person, rewire how you're being with the person, what energy that you're giving off. Rewire it, which means to change, to let go of the old way of being, the old way of seeing, and the old way of thinking and be rewired. Is there anybody that's willing to be rewired? That those old wires need to be changed. Um, it's like on the car, the spark plugs. Every certain, certain, uh, every uh, so, so long, every certain amount of time, you got to change the plugs on the, on the car. You know, and I'm not that great with cars. Uh, the belts need to be changed. Yes, every now and then, you got to change the plugs. The plugs need to be changed. And so give me some thumbs up. Give me some high fives. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It needs to be rewired let, because the old is worn out. And so I release and let go all that is old. And old doesn't mean age. Old just means it no longer works for you. I release and let go of all that is old, all that is worn, all that is obsolete, and that which no longer serves me well. Come on, I release and let go all that is old, all that is worn, all that is obsolete, and that which no longer serves me well. And I am willing to be rewired, to look at it differently, to think about it differently, to be with the person, to be with the situation differently. Yes, fasting will help you become rewired. All right? So how many fasting? Come on, I hope I've inspired you, motivated you, stimulated you to make some type of change in your digestion, in your consumption, of food and beverages. I love you so much. God bless you. Sow a seed, meet a need, boost this post to the hundreds, even thousands of people can hear what you heard today, can experience what you have experienced today. And I'm working with my camera. I will have it sideways the next time. But uh, we just went up and down. We went uh, vertical today instead of horizontal. But all is well. Thank you so much for being a part again of the daily download, the Tuesday edition for this is the Tuesday teaching. All right, share this with somebody, tag somebody in this post that you know that's struggling with fasting, uh, somebody that needs to become more healthy, even physically. Share this so that they can see not just the physical benefits, but the spiritual benefits of fasting. Until tomorrow morning, oh goodness, I got to have my music. Until tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., remember, God is doing something wonderful in me, and God is doing something wonderful in you. Remember that there's only one life, and that life is God's life. And God is living God's life through me, and God is living God's life through you. I'm getting it together. I don't have my engineers with me. But remember, there's only one life, and God is living God's life through me, and God is living God's life through you.